My name is Yun Hao, and I am a fourth-year PhD student at Cornell. Our paper is motivated by a growing threat to the soundness of blockchains. The possibility that malicious parties may manipulate the order of transactions recorded in the blockchain for their financial benefits. Such possibility has been notorious in traditional financial exchanges, where strategies like front running are expressly forbidden, but still occur all too often with very serious consequences. Decentralized exchanges based on blockchains are not immune. Recent work has shown that bots have ripped from unsuspecting parties over $6 million on the Ethereum platform through front running and other transaction reordering schemes. Our work focuses on the fundamental threat that order manipulation presents to exchanges built on top of so-called permissioned blockchains, like Libra or Hyperledger Fabric, run by consortia of mutually untrusting parties. We call this threat fundamental because its roots stem from the core technology these systems de depend on, visiting what tolerant state merge application. And I can hear some of you sighing at the mention of BFT. So I have good news for you. It is not going to be that kind of BFT paper. The bad news is that the problem runs much deeper it lies with the correctness specification of state machine replication. The recipe for state machine replication is well known. For safety, the spec requires all crack nodes that replicate a service to reach consensus on ledgers containing the same sequence of client commands, and then to process the commands in order. For liveness, the spec requires commands from crack clients to eventually appear in the ledgers of all crack nodes. Adding BFT simply guarantees that these promises can be kept even when 40 nodes behave arbitrarily. And that's it. In other words, the correctness specification requires uh, correct ledgers to reflect the same total order, but has nothing to say about which specific order. Indeed, if all we are interested in is fault tolerance, that's enough. As long as all correct nodes process commands in the same order, the specific order does not matter. However, when state merge application is used in permissioned blockchains to support financial and trading systems, as we saw earlier, order does matter. Keeping order out of the correctness specification is especially significant because most BFT protocols for state, state merge application, including those by Libra and Hyperledger, are leader-based and the leader has unilateral power to decide the order of commands. If the leader is Byzantine, this is clearly very bad news. We are not the first to observe this vulnerability. For example, to mitigate the influence of a single leader, Libra rotates leadership among the nodes in, in its system. This is a clear improvement, but it is not a solution. For one thing, the throughput of these protocols depends on leaders reaching consensus on batches of commands and each leader retains full authority over the commands in the same batch for which it leads the consensus protocol. But more importantly, fiddling with these mechanisms still does not answer whether or not the total order they ultimately produce is good because it still has no way to rigorously express and enforce what good means. The goal of this paper is to provide that answer. Specifically, we make four contributions. First, we expand the correctness specification of state merge application so that it can express rigorous requirements on the total order it produces. We call the agreement primitive at the core of this specification ordered consensus. Second, we explore the degree to which it is possible to curb the influence of basic nodes on the final total ordering. In other words, we try to understand which of the requirements we can ex express, we can also enforce. Third, we introduce a new architecture for state machine application that supports all the consensus through two separate modules. One that produces a valid relative order of commands, and another that ensures all correct nodes achieve consensus on a growing prefix of that valid order. And finally, we design, implement, and evaluate Pompeii to demonstrate that systems based on ordered consensus achieve performance competitive with state-of-the-art implementations, 
which don't offer ordering guarantees. Our first contribution, visiting ordered consensus, generalizes visiting state multiplication. Nodes associate an ordering indicator with the commands that is being proposed. Through ordering indicators, nodes can express their preference about how different commands should be ordered. For example, a crack node may prefer to order command one before command two because it became aware of command one before command two. In this example, because different crack nodes may receive commands in different order, they may end up with different preferences. Ordered consensus uses these preferences as input to determine which outputs, that is, which totally ordered sequences of commands are valid. For example, if all crack nodes are unanimous in preferring to order command one before command two, then we may want the output sequence to show command one preceding command two. Unfortunately, this seemingly very natural requirement is impossible to enforce in the presence of visiting nodes. And to get an intuition of why, consider a situation of four nodes and four commands. This figure shows the order and preference of the four nodes. Notice that node one, node, node three, and node four all prefer to order command one before command two, so that if node two is presenting, the protocol should order command one before command two if it satisfies ordering unanimity. But similarly, there are also three nodes preferring command two before command three, and three nodes preferring command three before command four, and three nodes preferring command four before command one, leading to a cycle. Since the protocol cannot distinguish which node is presenting, it cannot determine which output order should be enforced. This scenario, also called a Condorcet cycle, is a well-known cause of impossibility results in social choice theory. But that doesn't make it any less disappointing. Indeed, it motivated us to pursue our second contribution. We explore the degree to which business nodes can influence the output sequence. Here, the good news are that it is possible to pre prevent business nodes from solely determining the final total order, whether through the dictatorship of a single business leader or through a business oligarchy, which we define precisely in our paper. Unfortunately, though, we proved that it is impossible to completely eliminate the influence of visiting nodes. The reason is that, since in general, it is impossible to dis distinguish a priori between crack nodes and visiting nodes. There is a fundamental tension between giving every crack node a voice in determining the final order and com completely removing visiting influence. The rigorous proof of this impossibility result can be found in our paper. Fortunately, it remains very much possible to specify useful and natural ordering guarantees that can be enforced. In particular, our paper defines a guarantee we call ordering linearizability. In order linearizability, a node expresses its ordering preference for a command by assigning a timestamp to it. Informally, order linearizability says that if the highest timestamp from crack nodes for command one is lower than the lowest timestamp from crack nodes for command two, then the ledger is guaranteed to order command one before command two. Order, ordering linearizability is a natural extension of linearizability. It guarantees that commands will be linearized in some instant within the range of timestamps assigned by crack nodes. So, so in this figure, order linearizability guarantees that command one will be linearized somewhere in the green interval before command two. To enable ordered consensus and enforce properties like order linearizability, we develop a new architecture for state machine replication. In our new architecture, uh, ordering is separate from consensus. The ordering phase runs a protocol that prevents a single visiting uh, node or a visiting oligarchy from dictating the ordering of commands. Then the consensus phase periodically adds to, to the ledger of correct nodes a growing prefix of the ordered sequence of commands produced by the ordering phase. Note that because the consensus phase has no longer control over ordering, our new architecture is agnostic about the mechanism used to achieve consensus. In particular, it becomes possible to use leader-based protocols to drive consensus and reap the performance benefit of batching 
without worrying about order manipulation. We implement this new architecture in our system Pompe. We leverage our new modular architecture to build two variants of Pompe. Both use the same ordering phase to guarantee ordering linearizability. What changes is the state-of-the-art protocol used in the consensus phase. When variant extends hot stuff, the protocol in the Libra blockchain, while the other extends VMware Concord. So how does the ordering phase guarantee order linearizability? Note that its definition relies on timestamps from crack nodes, but one cannot distinguish between these timestamps from other timestamps given by Byzantine nodes. The high-level idea is actually pretty simple. Assume 3F plus 1 nodes, F Byzantine. For each command, collect any 2F plus 1 timestamps, possibly including timestamps from Byzantine nodes, and pick the median. As shown in this picture, the median of any 2F plus 1 timestamps for command 1 must be both upper bound and lower bound by the solid green region below, which shows the distribution of timestamps from crack nodes. Because at most, F out of the 2F plus 1 timestamps we have collected are coming from visiting nodes. Similarly, the median of any 2F plus 1 timestamps for command 2 must be both upper bound and lower bound by the solid yellow region below. Thus, order linearizability can be satisfied by assigning to each command the median timestamp from any quorum of 2F plus 1 timestamps. And the order interface needs to lock these median timestamps. As shown in this figure, the proposal of a command first collects timestamps from any 2F plus 1 nodes, as we saw earlier. And then it uses another round trip to write the median timestamp to another quorum of 2F plus 1 nodes. After this second round trip succeeds, the command and its order have been locked in the ledger, meaning that the command is guaranteed to appear in the ledger and that its, command, its order will be determined by the command's median timestamp. One interesting side effect of this protocol is that by the end of the second round trip, the command's proposer learns two very useful things before consensus even starts. First, the command is now guaranteed to appear in the ledger. And second, how the command will be ordered in the ledger with respect to other commands whose timestamp is known. Applications that can leverage this information can experience a lower end-to-end -end latency with Pompeii than with traditional state machine application protocols. After this two-round trip ordering phase, Pompeii's consensus phase commits to the output ledger growing prefixes of the total order produced by the ordering phase. Specifically, it associates with each consensus slot in the ledger a time interval. Each slot holds a batch of commands. For a given batch, all commands in the batch have a median timestamp that falls into this corresponding time interval. Once consensus is reached on a batch, the commands in the batch are then ordered in the ledger according to their respective timestamp. The protocol proceeds as follows. After a time interval elapsed, the consensus protocol first waits a little longer, enough for commands that should appear in this interval to be locked by the ordering phase. And then it collects newly locked commands together with their timestamps and use any standard state machine application protocol to add these commands to the ledger and order them by their timestamps. For example, in our experiments, the consensus phase in Pompeii batches every 500 milliseconds so that there can be a consensus slot associating with time interval 10 seconds to 10.5 seconds, and the next consensus slot associated with interval 10.5 seconds to 11 seconds. The consensus protocol that Pompey reuses may adopt different leaders for these slots, and some of the leaders can be Byzantine. However, a Byzantine leader has no control over the order of commands in this interval unlike in the state-of-the-art protocols we compared against, where a leader has unilateral control over its batch. The example on the right assumes a batch size of 200 and uses a rotating leader approach to reduce the influence of a Byzantine leader. Still, whenever a Byzantine node is, is become the leader, as in this case here from consensus slot 401 to slot 600, 
it can dictate the order of commands in the ledger over this range of slots. This is significant because the throughput of these protocols depends largely on the batch size. The larger the batch size, the higher the throughput. Thus, in state-of-the-art protocols, preserving higher throughput comes at the cost of increasing the number of commands whose order can be manipulated by a visiting leader. In contrast, batching in Pompeii is completely safe. Besides batching during consensus, the separation of ordering from consensus gives Pompeii an additional batching opportunity in the ordering phase. Specifically, the ordering phase can assign a single timestamp to a batch of commands that come from the same proposer, amortizing the cost of ordering across all commands in this batch. Such batching does not affect Pompeii's ordering guarantees because all commands in a batch come from the same proposer. But it raises the question of how to fairly compare the performance of Pompeii with its baselines. We balance the different considerations on batching as follows. If in a configuration with n nodes, the baseline's consensus protocol uses a batch size of beta during its consensus, then Pompeii will use a batch size of beta over n during its ordering phase. So next, we compare the performance of Pompeii with baselines. This slide compares throughput and latency of hot stuff and the variant of Pompeii using hot stuff as its consensus protocol in a setting with four geodistributed nodes. The batch size for hot stuff is 800 commands, and the batch size for Pompeii's ordering phase is 200 commands. Here, the x axis is the throughput in commands per second, and the y axis is the latency in milliseconds. The lines show the median 90 percentile and 99 percentile latencies of the two systems. The key takeaway is that the additional guarantees of Pompeii don't come with significant performance drawbacks. The graph shows a classic trade-off between latency and throughput. Both are higher in Pompeii compared with hot stuff. In our paper, we analyze the several factors that contribute to this behavior, including the latency incurred by Pompeii to ensure order linearizability, the additional opportunity for batching offered by Pompeii's ordering phase as we discussed earlier, and the delays incurred by the rotating leader mechanism used by hot stuff. The paper includes more evaluation with up to 100 nodes in both single data center and geodistributed settings, which come to essentially the same conclusion. Pompeii can offer rigorous ordering guarantees with the performance comparable to state-of-the-art consensus protocols in permission blockchains. In conclusion, I hope I have convinced you that there exists a fundamental gap between the correctness specification of classic state machine replication and the attacks it can be subject to when used in the context of blockchains. In blockchains, the specific total order produced by the protocol matters, but the traditional specification has no way to even express, never mind enforce, what makes an order good. His work fills that gap by introducing a new primitive ordered consensus that allows to specify replicated state machines where a good order can be both rigorously defined, as we have done by introducing order linearability, and efficiently enforced. To show the latter, we have designed a new modular architecture to support ordered consensus, and built a prototype Pompeii that enforces order linearability with performance comparable to state-of-the-art systems, which don't provide ordering guarantees. Thanks for listening, and please feel free to contact me for questions.